All right, now we're going to do the outline stitch for this smoke here that's coming out of the chimney. Um, the outline stitch it indicates uh, is two, two strands. So again, I'm going to tie the two ends of a single strand together and get that knot and get that pulled tight. Now, the outline stitch, um, generally speaking, I like to say that I like to work it as a smile. So kind of this way. So I'm going to start over here. I'm going to come up at the end of this little line of smoke here and pull that all the way through. Now I'm going to go down the way about a quarter of an inch and go in and come up about halfway from where I first started. Okay, and we're going to pull that through. And now I keep my thread down uh, below. That's why I like to work it as a smile. And I just hang on to that with my thumb. And then I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch down the line and come out right where that stitch ended. Pull that and hold it with my thumb. And just keep repeating that until I get to the end of this particular line. Now because this line is curvy and loopy, we may not be able to keep working this direction the whole way. We'll see. But I think when in doubt, tiny stitches are always best. Just, oops, you gotta hang on to your needle though. Just keep working in and out. And you want to be pulling your stitches, I say taut, not tight. Like you don't want there to be any pucker in the felt at all, but they do need to be tight and lay down nicely on the felt. And then when you get to the end here, I see I'm uh, I'm in the middle of that stitch so I just go down right next to where I came out but on the other side of that stitch and sometimes that really helps to hold that stitch in place looks like I need a little anchor for that stitch right there too so I might come over there so I'm gonna turn my work and now I can come up right here and work in like it's a smile um, and that way I can hold my thread with my thumb down below and we start again in and out about halfway and hold your thread and just a little farther I will come back and tack that little bit down. When you do these um, curly cues, these curves, uh, inevitably you're going to get a stitch or two where you're going kind of the wrong way, so to speak. It's, it's a frown instead of a smile. 
and um, that stitch might want to uh, you can see here it kind of wants to travel and uh, so you can come back with a little tack stitch like I did um, at the end and just hold it in place where it should be Small stitches are more likely to stay where you want them than longer stitches. And there we go. Tack the end. And that one looks pretty good. I'm going to come over here to this one and give it give it a little tack here. And I'd like to tack it right here. Just pull it over tight to where you want it to be. And there we go. So there's the, oops, there we go. There's the uh, smoke coming out of the chimney, which we will later uh, be applying with the applique. So now we are ready after we knot this off. You can see I've got a couple of threads there that are going longer than I usually go, but again, I will be lining this stocking so none of those threads can actually get pulled. And I can put this away, and it's ready for its next use. And, oops. Um, and now I need to thread up a bead needle. And that means I need to get out my needle threader. This is a pretty old one. Uh, I like to look for a bead needle that's got a fairly good eye on it, a good sized eye, and that goes through there. And then I just have to put, again, a single strand for sequins, but we always are going to double it for our sequins and beads. Um, your sequins and beads are vulnerable, let's say, because uh, they can get pulled easily because they stand out, um, you know, unlike the other stitches that maybe are flat. So it does, it too needs um, some conditioning. And I see that this kit, uh, the floss is a little rough. Um, so this does help to smooth it out and to um, give it a little bit of moisture um, you really when you purchase a kit they're all wonderful I rarely have any issues with the Bucilla kits I work pretty much primarily just with them and I've got a kit review video if you want to know why and it'll show you a couple of different kits and I'll tell you why but um, even Bucilla plaid kits can sit on the shelf for a while. And that can um, then have your floss 
uh, get kind of dried out. Now, again, for sequins and beads, we're going to double it always. So we're going to tie the two ends together. And pull our needle down. Okay, I'm going to start with doing the sequins and the beads on the uh, kind of the snowflakes there. And I get out uh, white sequins, get um, clear beads. So I dump some in there like that and then get out my white sequins. I love these because they sit in here, um, but they hold them and keep them from tipping over. If you've done this once or twice, you're going to realize that these bead containers and sequin containers like to tip over. So, in order to apply sequins and beads, we are going to go through the center of the dot that uh, is indicated. I get my finger slightly damp. Uh, you could have a sponge with water on it. That would be the most ethical thing to do, but I never seem to have that. So I always just lick my finger. Pick up a bead. And now go back through the center of the sequin and down. And again, these are the ones that are far apart. So I am going to put a knot in the back. Two knots, actually. I always do two. I'm a double knotter from way back when. Don't know if I double knotted my shoes, but I know I double knotted all my children's shoes. And I'll show you a few more sequins here just to be sure you got it. Um, at the top, across the top of this stocking, these are all going to be white sequins. When you're doing those, I do... Um, I do oh maybe six sequins and then I put a knot and then maybe another six and do a knot. Um, that just helps that, that at the top is where your stocking gets a lot of um, handling, we'll say, and just helps to keep those from getting loose. And if one or two should get loose, that means that you won't lose the whole, the whole strand. That would be terrible. So we'll do another one here. So we're going to come up through the center of the dot. And I leave my needle halfway in and halfway out so I can hold it. And now I hang on to the sequin. Now, I always put my sequins cupped up. Um, I didn't do that at first. Uh, the first, I think, three or four stockings that I made I did them the other way. I had no idea. And then my sister-in-law asked me if I would do the stockings for her three children. And she had started one and decided it just wasn't something that she was going to be able to get finished in time. And would I help her? And when she gave me that one that she'd started, I noticed that her sequins were going in that cupped way, not kind of the flatter way and oh they just caught the light and were so pretty and so from then on I've been doing them what I think is the proper way I, I suppose it's a matter of opinion um, and certainly it's your stocking that you're making or for someone you can choose to do it however you like but I think that when they're cupped they certainly catch the light and um, are really quite brilliant. And I love these sequins that have the uh, real iridescence. And then you pick up a bead and go back down through the same spot. And again, I'm knotting each of these just because they are um, so far apart. And when you've got a, a string of them, just not every so often, however you feel comfortable. I, I say five or six, 
Um, but really, you can do it whatever you think seems appropriate. Just um, you're going to put in hours in the details in these stockings, lots of hours. You certainly would hate to see them fall apart. And uh, check out my videos if you want. Um, I have a, a memory lane video that shows you the stockings that I did for my children. Um, and the oldest of which will be almost 40 years old um, next year. You know, Keith will turn 40 this summer of 23. Oops. Um, and I think I had his stocking done when he was... It wasn't for his first Christmas, I'll be honest. It was for his second, I think. So, uh, it is possible to have these stockings stay a part of your family for a very long period of time. And uh, there's also another video I've got out there on how to store them. And that might be uh, something you want to check into to be sure that you're storing them in a way that they will last uh, as much as possible. Okay, so that is sequining. After I finish these white ones going up around here, I will do the white ones across the top. Then I will probably come back and do the stars. Now the stars are done just like a sequin. You come up through the center of the dot with your needle, put a star on, pull through, grab a clear bead, and go back down through the center of the star. So it's just it's just like it's a sequin, it's just a different shape. So I will show you what this all looks like when I get this all done. Well, here we are again, ready to continue with our sleigh ride with Santa stocking. So this is the kit that we are working on. I have just begun. And I have completed uh, a, a little bit off camera, so I'll show you. But one, two, and three, um, the first three boxes I have completed. So let me show you what that is. If I can pick it up. There we go. Here is what it looks like. Tried to make it so you can see the whole thing. All right, so we've got the top uh, sequins done. We've got, there's some embroidery underneath these white sequins. That's all been done. And then the white sequins attached the uh, gold stars, and they're attached with a clear bead, just like a sequin would be. We've got some uh, embroidery down here at the bottom. This is just simply a straight stitch. And this is an outline stitch for that smoke there on the uh, chimney. And then I have attached, I've embroidered and attached, and I attach them only kind of at the end, um, these leaves. It doesn't really say definitely only attach, don't attach them completely, but in most cases, in most stockings that I've found, um, these kinds of things are ways to give it a little bit more 3D, and you kind of just attach um, at the end up here. But I found that when I was able to lift this up, I could see the number. So I didn't want that to happen. So I just put a couple little tack stitches there to hold it down so that it couldn't be lifted all the way up. And then these three red beads. And then I did the um, moon, attached the, the sequins are yellow with a clear sequin, or I'm sorry, with a clear bead and then applique down with a yellow thread. Um, generally, I would assume that this moon would be stuffed a little, but I think because these uh, reindeer parts are going to go on top of it, that that's why it didn't say to stuff. So that's where we're at. And now 
we're ready to applique, it says here, this is the next step here. Bring you down, I think that should be better. And we are on this one, two, three, the fourth box down. It says stuff and applique the leg to the stocking, then add the embroidery for the hoof. And it says on the picture, a chenille stick cut to size was used for stuffing. So instead of stuffing, they are using, and let me show you where this is that we're talking about. Um, yes, it's right here, number five. So it's this leg right here, number five. And I keep chenille sticks. The link to them will also be in the description. But I do keep, these are, chenille sticks are pipe cleaners for, you know, the common term. Um, but chenille sticks tend to have a little longer kind of hairy, furry stuff on them. These are actually real pipe cleaners, like used like by my grandfather to clean his pipe. Um, so they are not as hairy, I guess is the best way to say. And I find that they fit into these small spaces so much better. So I'm going to kind of guesstimate where to cut this off and we'll make it more for real here. Now, I want to cut it about right here. Remember, do not, oh please, do not use your good scissors. Um, I'm going to step away for a second and grab my kitchen shears, which are made for cutting meat and bones and things in the kitchen. Um, and I'm going to grab those and snip that off. Or if you have a pair of wire cutters, um, that's what you want to use. And I've, I'm letting it go just slightly. Let me let you see. There we go. Just slightly into the hoof area because we are going to embroider on the hoof. And then over here, uh, it's got the bend for the, the reindeer's knee. And I want it to cut right here. So... Let me be right back with you. Okay, here is the little piece that I have cut to put in that leg right there. Now I have to cut out the piece. I have to find, here it is, number five. And we're going to cut that out. And we're cutting just carefully like we have all the other pieces right on the inside, just inside the line. And uh, again, a, a pair of small uh, pointed scissors are really helpful. I love these Ginger scissors. Um, there's a link to them in the description. My particular ones have the large handles on them. Um, it's helpful and a little bit more comfortable for me, but you may want the normal ones. I don't believe there's a difference in price. Um, and I highly recommend that you use these only for uh, fabric or for, I keep mine specifically just for my felt projects. Um, and I do go to my uh, Joann's store is my closest store and they offer scissor sharpening I think it's once a month um, and it's like seven dollars to sharpen one pair so uh, for me it's well worth it to keep these scissors nice and sharp um, to make sure that they're gonna work well and cut nicely and neatly. 
Okay, now you can see here is the hoof section that they were talking about. So let's see, what does it say we're going to embroider that hoop? It says to stitch it down first, and that is a good recommendation. It looks like it's the solid black. So um, see the color of the hoof is solid black. We come over here to our chart and see that the solid black is a satin stitch with two strands of black thread. But we're going to do that after we uh, put the, the hoof onto the stocking. And in this case, I'm going to put, um, put this chenille stick. I believe I'm going to just let that be in there while I stitch it on. But we'll see if I can pin it with that stick in there. I may have to put it in after. I think I will. I think that what I'm going to choose to do is get this pinned down so that it won't move on me. And I am lining up the very edge of the stocking with the very edge of the piece. I had a great question from a viewer about how to applique when it is right on the edge like that. And that is going to be a very slightly different stitch than you would do if uh, you're on the stocking here. So we need to get some brown floss. And it looks like the best option. I don't know if it's that red brown or this dark probably this dark brown I think is going to be my choice to stitch these reindeer pieces on. Um, the rule of thumb that I was always taught in um, sewing is that if you can't match exactly, match darker. Go a little darker because um, dark is less likely to show than um, lighter. So that's the rule that I use. And I'm just going to try to get one strand out here. And again, um, I am finding that this kit uh, does have some issues with the floss being pretty dry. Um, so I am conditioning all, all of my floss uh, before I use it <clears throat> with this uh, magic, th thread magic it's called. Um, again, a link to that too in the description box. Um, it's really just clear wax in a container and you pull the thread through. I've probably already shown you this. You probably see it a thousand more times. Um, <laughs> but just to make sure we've all got it. Um, this just coats your thread with a very, very um, minimal bit of uh, wax, this clear wax. It helps to keep it from knotting as much, and it also um, conditions it when it's kind of dry like this. And, and really dry floss does have a tendency to tangle and knot a whole lot more than floss that is not as dry. And you just don't know what you're going to get when you get a kit. Um, the only thing I can imagine is that some kits have um, are older than others. You know, they've been sitting on a shelf somewhere. Uh, and maybe that's why the floss in one kit or another is more dry. Also, I live in the Southwest, so, you know, it's just plain dry here. So we have a tendency, once you open a kit, probably the floss to dry out. Now, oops, there it is. There's my little chenille piece that's going to go in. So I'm going to start by stitching here and around all the parts up until I come to the edge. When I get to the edge, then I'm going to have all my pins out, and I'm going to be able to slide that chenille stick in. And I'll show you how to... Um, applique a piece that is right on the edge. That was the, a great question from a viewer um, on a previous video 
asking exactly how do you do that and uh, it's it's pretty much the same but with a slight variation so we'll talk about that when we get over there even with the thread conditioner you're still going to get some knots because life has knots there we go and then we'll come back to this piece after it is completely sewn down and do that black solid stitch for the hoof um, these uh, small pieces um, of satin stitch uh, satin all right let me say it this way satin stitch on pieces that are rather small um, can be really a challenge to do and frequently even if they don't recommend it I will recommend that you to my mic and muted it accidentally so what I was saying is I would recommend that you stitch small pieces down to the main body of this of the stocking prior to doing your satin stitch especially when it goes over the edge of a piece it can be very challenging so here you can see that we're going to completely go all the way around I'm sorry not all the way around but about two-thirds of the way around this piece with our just general normal everyday applique stitch and that is just going to finish when we get up to the edge of the stocking there and here when I get to this point you want to be sure and um, I point out to you here that these lines on your piece line up with the lines that are in the stocking so that just tells you that you've got that piece situated exactly how they want you to have it so here we're coming right up to the edge of the stocking so we need to pull out our pins and insert that chenille stick into the opening there where we can because um, it's open right there and you can see we can just slide the stick in now the chenille kind of fuzz uh, against the felt does not slip and slide real easily so be sure that you can kind of work it into where you want it to go or maybe in this case don't sew it quite as far around as I did it would be easier to get it in and then once you get it placed in there you really can't pin it at that point because there just isn't enough felt around it to get a pin situated in so I just kind of close it and hold it with my fingers and then stitch the rest and now this is the stitching of applique when you're on the edge you're going to go all the way around the felt so you're only going in from the underside moving down like I said it's about a quarter to an eighth of an inch um, down the way and around so you're stitching and your thread is going all the way around from the top of your piece around to the bottom and to the underside of your piece stitching it all the way closed and enclosing that chenille stick and keeping that in there it does feel a little different to stitch with that kind of a stiff uh, something stiff in there it does feel different um, but it's not hard you just need to make sure that you are getting a little bite of the felt from the front of the stocking and a little bite of your piece and uh, it's going all the way around there and it does it does work out just just fine and then when you get to the end you're going to finish up and knot your piece closed and then you will be ready for the satin stitch on that hoof.
Okay, now we are ready to do the satin stitch on the hoof. And the satin stitch is done with two strands. So I've threaded up one strand and pulled it together and not put a knot in both strands at the end. And now I feel, t just for me, that satin stitch is probably the most tedious uh, of the embroidery stitches. It takes a lot of time for a small amount and you do need to fill in the space completely. So we are going to fill in the space from that line on the hoof to the very end and the edge of the piece. And I'm going to go all the way around it because the piece does stick out over the edge of the stocking there. So come up right on as close to the edge as you can of the piece, uh, on the line, and then go all the way around and bring your needle up right next to where you brought it up the last time. And you have to kind of really work with this to get it over the edge and uh, right in in a good place and lined up correctly. Um, and being on the edge, you've got all the most difficulty right here. Uh, it's on the edge, it's over the edge, and it's uh, your first stitches. So... <clears throat> it can really be challenging to get that right where you want it. And if it's not right where you want it initially and you are struggling to work it around, you can always come back and add some more stitches once you get most of the main work done. So we're just gonna keep going all the way around, coming up right next to, I mean, so minutely over, uh, from where you just came up. These stitches are so close together that I have to pull the thread um, out of the way to really see where I need it to go. Now the one advantage is that you're working on felt. It's not a slippery fabric. So once you get the stitch where you want it, it usually will pretty much stay there. So that is one advantage. But you're going to just continue to keep going all the way around. Once we get done with the edge of this, where it's hanging over the edge of the stocking, then we'll actually go down in the felt at the edge of the piece and back up right next to where we came out. So um, again, you can work with these stitches. Don't pull them too tight. That's one way that you're going to open up a gap between the stitches. So they need to be taut but not tight. Um, and sometimes when you thread a needle the way that I thread it by tying both ends together, you'll get one strand is tighter than the other and you need to separate them like this and pull them independently to get them uh, really lined up correctly. Um, and again, you can always come back uh, and add a, a stitch or two where you need to and the needle helps you to kind of comb it and get them so that they line up where you want them to be um, but just keep working it keep working it keep working it and again remember if when you get done you have some gaps that you want to fill just go back and fill those gaps and keep working all the way um, around that piece and now we're about ready to go in and out because we've completed the edge of the stocking and we can now go down where into the blue felt but right at the edge of the hoof piece and continue working till you get all the way to the edge.
Okay, you can see it did take me a while to get that the way I liked it. Um, and now I'm nodding it off. I will tell you a trick that if you just don't can't get it the way you like it. You feel like there's some gaps that you just are not closing up and they're not staying. Tie it off, finish it up like this, and then come back with a black Sharpie and color in. That's, you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> but it is a way that you can get it really solid and be sure that nothing is going to show through. So now we're ready to start the next piece. And you can see we've got the next piece here. We can check off that long list there. And now the next piece is the antler. And it is number, it looks like number eight. Um, and it is just, you just cut out the amp antler and use the applique stitch to just stitch all the way around it. It does not get any stuffing or anything it just gets stitched down so it is a little bit of a tedious cut the antlers are not brown the antlers are going to be kind of the creamy uh, fleshy color you're going to find the faces of the other people um, yep see um, it's the same color as the faces of say Santa and his little friend so uh, it's in that fleshy colored piece so find that, find number eight, and you get that cut out and uh, pin it on so that it covers all of the lines and the stitching. Um, and you're going to just stitch all the way around it. And then we're done with this section. Come back and meet us, meet up with us for more stocking construction on part three. Thank <laughs> you.